Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to crack off-campus placements. Also this video is a part of my placement preparation playlist which is all about how to crack your dream placement. I'll give a link to it in the description, it will also appear on the corner card. So do check it out and let's get to the video. So I've covered this in three steps. Step one is preparation, like what to prepare, how to prepare. Step two is how to get the interview calls and step three is how to crack the interview. So how to crack off-campus placements in three steps, let's go. So step one is preparation. So you need to have a really good preparation in order to have a chance in off-campus placements because off-campus placements is more difficult than on-campus and the reason for that is the large competition that you're facing. So you need to have a real good preparation, okay? And the two important parts of your preparation, one is DSA and problem solving and the other one is having good projects. So you need to be really good in DSA and problem solving because the majority of your interview will be focused on how good you are at DSA and how good your problem solving skills are. So you need to be really good in DSA and problem solving and apart from that you need to have some really good projects in your resume as well. Okay, so let's get into them both one by one. So first you need to, you need to do DSA and problem solving and before you do this you need to know one programming language. So I suggest either go with C++ or go with Java. So learn either C++ or Java and there's a lot of websites for learning, the, for learning this. So there's Tutorials Point, there's Java T Point, there's W3 School, there's a lot of websites and you can learn either C++ or Java from them. Okay, so learn whichever one you want and after learning the language, learn the library of the language and once you're confident with the language, then you're going to jump straight into DSA. Okay, now how to do DSA? So I've mentioned this in my other videos and I'll mention this again. So how to do DSA, first you need to get a list of the data structures and algorithms that you're going to do. So you need to get a list of DSA. So you'll find a list from geeks for geeks So get a list of the data structures and algorithm that you're going to do. After you have the list, this is what you're going to do, okay? For each data structure and for each algorithm, you're going to learn first the theory. You're going to learn the theory of the DSA. You're going to learn the implementation of the DSA, like how to implement it in code. Then you're going to solve problems, okay? So these three things you're going to do for every data structure and every algorithm, okay? So first, learn the theory. So you can learn the theory from YouTube. There's a lot of channels like Abdul Bari, Tushar Roy, who explain the theory of data structure and algorithm, okay? So for example, if you're on linked list, then understand the theory of linked list, like how the nodes are being connected, how the nodes are being deleted, understand everything in theory, okay? So first learn the theory, then learn the implementation, like how to implement the data structure or how to implement the algorithm in code, whatever language you chose, either C++ or Java. And for implementation, you can refer geeks for geeks geeks so geeks has implementation of all DSA, all data structure and algorithm in both C++ and Java. Okay, so learn the implementation and then solve problems. So solving problems is the most important part of it. So for every data structure, for every algorithm, I want you to do theory, learn the implementation and then solve problems. For solving problems, two websites, geeks for geeks and lead code, these two are enough for DSA. Okay, so try to solve as many problems as you can. For every data structure, for every algorithm, try to solve as many problems as you can. The more you solve, the better your problem solving skills will be. Okay, so try to solve as many as you can. Apart from these websites, you can also use Codeforces or Codeshift. So these two websites are generally associated with computer programming, but they have the problems that generally, the type of problems that generally appear in online coding round. So for a lot of companies, you'll have an online coding round and the questions that you'll see there, the problems that you'll see there are very similar to computer programming problems. So I want you to go on Codeforces and Codeshift and try to do some problems from there as well, okay? So try to solve some, prob some problems from Codeforces and Codeshift as well. That will also improve your problem solving skills and even show you where you stand, okay? So once you're confident in problem solving, once you're confident in DSA, once you've done the work, then the next thing is giving contest, okay? So giving contest is a really good way of knowing where you stand and of testing your skills, okay? So Geeks for Geeks has contests, Lead, Lead Code has contests, Code for the Code Chef, all of these websites have contests. So try to give contests on Lead Code and Geeks for Geeks try to give 10 to 15 contests, okay? And even on Code Forces and Code Chef, try to give a few contests and that will show you how a coding round looks like and that will help you assess your skills as well, okay? So try to give a few contests at the end of your DSA preparation. Now, side by side, you also need to do some projects as well, like I said. And I have made an entire video on this, 
how to make a good projects for placements i'll link it in the description it will also appear on the corner card you can watch that video but the essence of it is that you need to pick, pick you need to pick any field so what do i mean by a field so you have web development you have android development you have machine learning data science data analytics there's a lot of fields right so you need to pick any field and you need to make a good project in that field okay and if you're confused i highly suggest go with web development because web development isn't demand pretty much because web development isn't demand pretty much all the time and you'll find a lot of resources on web development as well okay so pick any field and then make a project now the project that you're making it should be a little bit unique it should be a little bit complex don't make something very easy so make something that is unique a little bit unique make something that is a little bit complex and something that tries to solve a real life problem okay so consider these things in mind once making the project and then make a good project that you can put in your resume a shortcut to doing this so a shortcut to doing this part completely is udemy okay so go on udemy and then you'll find a lot of courses on udemy so for web development whatever it is so suppose for web development go on udemy buy one of the high rated courses follow the course they'll have a project in the course as well follow the course make the project along with the course and put a little bit of twist to the project and then this entirety of the portion is done so you can buy a course on udemy and then make a project along with the course okay so udemy is kind of like a shortcut and to be honest i also took a course on udemy in android and web development and that really helped me a lot okay other part to this is system design so i've seen a lot of companies ask system i have system design round in on in off campus placement but majority of them are for experienced people but even for freshers i've seen some companies have system design round so you can do some system design patterns etc but this is low priority okay so if you have time you can look into system design as well okay so this is your preparation once you do the preparation once you feel like you have a little bit hold over preparation then the next step is to get the interview calls right because in off campus the companies are not coming to you you have to go and get the call from the interview so how do you do that so the first step is having a good resume so you need to have a really really good resume in order to get calls for for interview okay so your resume should be on point okay especially for off campus placements your resume should be on point and in your resume try to put something special some special achievement or something special you have done for example if you've solved a lot of problems on lead code you can mention that or if you have a high rating in code for zero code chef you can mention that or if you have taken part in icpc you you can mention that if you have a open source project that you've contributed to you can mention that try to have something special in your resume that help that will help set your resume apart from the thousands of resume that the companies gets every day okay so try to keep something special in your resume once your resume is done and you can find a lot of videos about how to make a good resume on youtube so make a good resume try to put something special there put the project in your resume once your resume is ready the next thing is networking so this is very important for getting interview calls so i want you to go on linkedin if you haven't and make a account on linkedin okay so make an account on linkedin okay so on linkedin you'll find almost every working professional you'll find a lot of software developers you'll find hiring manager you'll find recruiting manager so go on linkedin and learn how to network on linkedin okay so basically what you're going to do is you're going to get in touch with recruiting managers hiring managers and then you'll send them your resume and you can ask if there's a position open and then there's software developers in a lot of companies you can ask them for referral okay so referral is a great way of getting a call for interview okay so you need to get in contact with people over linkedin and majority of them will be supportive and majority of them will be willing to give you a referral if you have a good resume and if you have done a great job in preparation okay so go on linkedin network and this will take some efforts that this will take some time but build some connections network on linkedin and via getting in contact with people you'll be able to get a call for interview okay and again you can even learn online how to network on linkedin but the essence of it is just getting in contact with hiring managers software developers and recruiting managers on linkedin and then you can get referrals okay apart from that another way of getting interview calls is to take part in open contest so a lot of website a lot of companies have open contest like google flipkart amazon they have open contest and you can take part in it 
so you can take part in it and if you have a good rank then you'll get a call for interview okay another way is a hiring challenge or hackathon so there's this website hacker earth you might have heard of it so hacker earth has an entire section in which you have hiring challenges okay so a lot of companies have hiring challenges anyone can take part in it and if you have a good performance then you'll get a call for interview so you can take part in open contest hiring challenges hackathon if you perform well you'll be able to get a call for interview okay so your preparation is done you've gotten a call for interview and suppose you have scheduled an interview for the next month or in 2 3 weeks then what do you do how do you actually crack the interview so coming to the third step that is how to actually crack the interview or what to do before the interview once you have the interview scheduled ahead of you then the first thing that you need to do is whatever company you are appearing for whether amazon google microsoft whatever company you are appearing for go on geeks for geeks and learn the interview experience of that company so geeks for geeks has interview experience of almost every company that there is okay and this is very important whatever company you are appearing for go in geeks for geeks the interview experience section and then learn the interview experience of that company and that will really help you have an understanding of the type of questions or the type of rounds that the companies have the company has okay and then geeks for geeks also has a interview question section where they have company wise interview section so try to find the company you are appearing for and solve all the problems in the interview questions okay that will help you practice and get an idea of the difficulty okay once you've done this then another great way of assessing your skill is giving mock interviews so again this is optional you don't really need to do this but if you have time then you can ask your seniors or your friends to take a mock interview and there's also a lot of websites where you can give mock interviews for free i'll give a link to those websites so try to give some mock interviews that will help you see where you stand and that will help you boost your confidence as well coming to confidence once you've done everything then the next important part is having confidence in yourself okay you've done everything now once you're in the interview have confidence in yourself whatever problem you're facing in the interview whatever the scenario you're facing in the interview don't lose confidence in yourself have confidence in yourself have confidence in your preparation and then definitely you'll be able to crack the company that you want okay so i guarantee you once you do all of this and once you put actual efforts into your preparation into doing all of this and once you have enough confidence in yourself then definitely you'll be able to crack the company that you want okay so i hope i haven't missed anything in case i have i'll put it in the comments and also do subscribe to my channel it really helps me out i'll be making more videos on placement preparation and dsa etc so do subscribe and leave a like and comment thank you for watching